Okay, so I should probably do I should probably do a, a, a little bit of a recap. I'm gonna do a real quick recap for, for Damon's edification. I read the email, so but that's yeah. a lot to absorb. It was. It was it was a hell of a lot. A lot an awful lot happened, which was like uh which was crazy. But um yeah, it went it went exactly the way I wanted it to, but I had no I had no idea it would be as kind of as expansive as it was, so it was pretty, it was pretty cool. So, um, all you guys went to uh, this rim station called Prospero's Dream in search of work, and you all hired on on the uh, the ship uh, Peril of Io um, under Captain Bao Yan. And um, it was, I believe, a three to four month mission, was it? Yep. For uh, rescue and salvage for a um, archaeological research vessel called the Alexis, owned by the same company as the Peril of Io, which is the Murakami Wolf Company, Wolf Corporation, I should say. Um, and so, uh, some various shenanigans happened on the station and, uh, you all left in a hurry and you've been assured that the, the rescue and salvage operation is, uh, uh, by the books, <laughs> rescue and salvage, nothing unusual. Um, the Alexis was exploring a planetary system in uh, uncharted space. All of space uncharted. Yep. And then they received no, except for the, the space that's charted. <laughs> it's got you there. I do oh, have you there. The logic is flawless. <laughs> uh, yes. It's um, it's full of dry docks. It's, it's the many dry docks of uncharted space, but um. The Alexis sent out several transmissions stating that its uh, jump drives were no longer functioning and that they needed rescuing. And there have been um, intermittent transmissions since then from the Alexis, and they have transmitted their coordinates repeatedly throughout those intermittent transmissions. So um, you're fairly certain everybody is you know, still on board that ship, still transmitting, but they are clearly stuck in deep space with no way of getting back to civilization without their jump drives functioning. And so you're out to do a repair or rescue and salvage mission. And so you leave um, Prospero's dream, and you have all you all entered uh, cryogenic cryosleep nice. in order to make the several jumps that will that it will take in order to reach um, that area of space because it's uh, it's a long way out. What do I have it as? Twenty two parsecs from Prospero's dream. So. You can look that up. It's it's a it's a long way. Um, and because uh, you all have to be in uh, cryo sleep because of the the mental and physical effects of uh, jumping through hyperspace that it causes to the the human physiology. So the ship is basically piloted by um, androids. And um, Captain Yan has two main androids by the names of Castor and Pollux, who will be controlling the ship as it jumps through space. And so, does anyone have any questions at this point in time? I do. Um, you do. Go ahead. Do we, uh, I think that uh, Dr. Uh, I think a Tommy would be interested to know if there's any kind of a crew manifest for the Alexis that we have uh, that we have access to. 
I don't, I don't necessarily need a player to hand, hand out, but like if if, if, yes. if we're able to, yeah. Yes. There is indeed. You know it's under the command of a Captain Yan Chegg. And um, the first mate is uh, Rayek. There are also um, there are approximately 20 crew members on board, plus uh, two androids. Is that sufficient info for you at this point? That is, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that you And you would, of... um, if you have any, uh, I'm not sure what's in your inventory or whatever, but if you have any kind of uh, electronic uh, recording device or whatever, you will have, you would have access to this information. Can I get okay. other characters' names since I was not introduced in the initial oh, session? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, um, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> Let me narrate a tad here, Damon, and then uh, we can uh, do the. No, fuck it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> your... Go ahead and do your do your thing. I was going uh, to have I was going to have a scene where you could all sit around and introduce yourselves, but nobody wants to do that. So they've all they've, they've all they've all met except you. So. All right, we yeah. Um, start with, uh, I'll just start from the top uh, with Jenny. Oh. oh, okay. Fine. Yes, I, uh, I both Gergo. I am Hungarian, not Russian. <laughs> I'm Teamster. Uh, very experienced. Um, you're not a scab, are you? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. I accept your presence. Dude, tell her you're tell them you're Russian. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh Rob. Yeah, I'm uh, arsenic sulfide, uh sign on <laughs> as a marine, uh former asteroid belter, now getting the hell away from asteroid belts as best I can. Hey, Cam. Oh, move on to Brent. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, so uh, my name's Tommy, uh, Tommy Walsh. Uh, I'm pretty good at patching people up. Some people call me Doc. They shouldn't. I, I don't have a medical license. Uh, but I know, I know my way around, uh, you know, body parts. And stuff. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't riding the mute fast enough. Oh, no, you're fine. Damon's just looking for an intro to your character. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm ID Kenty. I'm the resident uh, uh, android besides Casper and Pollock, I guess. Um, yeah, I uh, got up to some no good, and I am now owned by the... If I can navigate to the right spot on my character sheet here. I'm owned by a large multinational, and and yeah, doing that fun stuff. Just like just like Cam. Yep. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we um we what continue about our character. Oh yeah, Damon. My God, sorry. <laughs> uh, crank hard blast. Uh, <laughs> experienced <laughs> teamster. <laughs> Took uh. Just, just keep your head on your shoulders, right? I, I can't fix stupid. <laughs> hey, you funny are... enough, that's yeah. a convenient sound. You're not Russian, are you, Crank? This... Do I sound Russian, Bolt? Oh, Which... you Which two point? are just, you two are just gonna get a hug, famously here. <laughs> <laughs> Crank and Bolt, the teamster team. <laughs> I suddenly feel, uh, you know, I suddenly feel like the smallest guy in class. You know what I mean? Because uh, you are. Ah, uh, little man drinks big, though. Yeah, drink big. <laughs> okay, so this this was this was the conversation you all had while uh, Pearl of Io was 
docked at Prospero's dream. And then in the morning, you all uh, retired to um, the ship's cryo chamber and entered uh, cryogenic sleep. There are 12 units. Two, four, six, yes. Um, sorry, no, there are not. There are 14 units. You you are all in one, and there are other crew members in the other. There's a full complement of crew and two androids. Oh, and you, how long are we? You all enter cryosleep, and um, we begin our story uh, approximately eight days later. Is that answering your question, Brent? It is. We're taking that time. Um, yeah, you have all you have all been asleep for for eight days, and um, you're all in you're all in a, a, a deep chemical sleep. I don't know nice. how this works, but we'll assume it's a deep chemical sleep. And nice. um, you all slowly slowly become aware of um, vague sounds around you. And um, you start to feel the cold air that's surrounding your bodies begin to, um, you know, gently warm. And the uh, glass canopies covering you all open up simultaneously. And you're all just lying there quietly and you're, you're all just awake at your own, at your own pace. And um, Captain Yan is also there with you, and she is already sitting bolt upright, and she is uh, fixing herself her. Uh, she she smokes a pipe, so she's fixing herself a, a pipe, and um, she is looking at a. She is looking at like a data pad, personal data pad. She seems quite perplexed, but what that. What she's looking at, and she's she keeps looking at, it and she's muttering to herself, and she's saying, "I moved on to the, iPhones now." What's the hell? Apple this. What's up, Cap? This. Well, yeah. What, this, what's going on, Cap? Uh, and she's just kind of just is just kind of ignoring you, and she's still muttering to herself, and she goes, "This can't be right. This this is this is impossible." And she, so she gets up out of her cryo chamber and goes over to the. Uh, the wall where there's just like a, a button comm system and um, she just yells into it and she says, Pollux, what the hell's happening up there? And um, a very calm voice replies and um, says, uh, ah, good morning, Captain. Welcome to the waking world again. I am afraid we have an unusual incident mm -mm. that requires you on the bridge immediately. And um, so Yan just heads out of the uh, cryo chamber. And as she's, as she's leaving, she turns to you and says, uh, why don't you folks Muster up. It looks like we're going to be busy right away here. You guys can get some food in the galley right here. And then meet me on the bridge ASAP. And then she heads off. So you're all awaking. I do have a little map for you here. You're all awaking here in the on the habitat deck. <clears throat> Of the Pearl of Io, you can see in the cryo chambers room, mm -hmm. and then just across outside, across the hallway, is the galley. And there's also the barracks where you will uh, sleep and live when you're not on duty. Um, so 
Where is my galley? I do have a galley for you too. Yeah, I'll make my but, way over to the galley. Yeah, the yeah. galley too. I'll try to see what it takes to make some space coffee. There's no um. There's no um. There's no uh, alarms or anything going off quite just yet. You have noticed is, that the. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, is is our gear uh, uh, readily available? Is it next to us, or is it waiting in the barracks? Your I'd gear, like to grab your gear my. Would, your clothes would be in the barracks if you wanted to just go and like um, go and shower and change into your working gear. I'd get my gear and all my tools together before I made my way to the galley. Okay. That'll work. Coffee first. Stuff yeah, here. same. I'll get fueled up a little and then grab my stuff. Bolt needs food. Okay. What do we got here? Vending machines or we got to cook? No, you just got you just got vending machines or else you got to make you got to make your own stuff. I mean, it's all it's all synthetic food and synthetic so coffee. Prepackaged stuff. Delicious. All the vitamins yeah. and minerals mom ever wanted me to have. Yes. It's all, well, you know, real coffee and real food is far too expensive. Yeah. Okay, well, Bolt Bolt picks the the deluxe bacon and eggs or whatever it is and <laughs> makes some of that. Yeah. The other the other um crew's uh cryo chambers uh did not open. They did not. They're still all in cryo sleep. Hmm. That's kind oh. of strange. So, are we on That's first good. shift? Excuse me? Yeah. I think Tommy just idly wonders if, if they're oh. on first shift or something. Yeah, it does seem weird, but... Yeah. yeah, I think once we're finished with our business, we join the captain up on the on the deck. Yep. Yep, with all our tools and gear and everything. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, you head back out into the... Uh, Central hallway there, and um, make your way up the ladder to the command deck and the bridge. And um, Captain Yan is standing there. Um, the bridge is a kind of semicircular room with a uh, a captain's chair in the middle and uh, two command consoles on either side. And Captain Yan is standing in front of her chair, staring at the window. This, this the in front of it is just this just wraparound glass that gives you a basic half panoramic view of the space in front of you. And then at either control console, is a uh, our two androids who you assume are Castor and Pollux, mm -hmm. or Pollux and, and Castor, or Pollux and Castor, and they uh, both of them are um, feverishly uh, like running numbers and checking uh, their readings. But um, as you enter the bridge. <coughs> Captain Yan turns suddenly to greet you and uh, says, uh, well, welcome aboard. But I think what we have here is a bad situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. And looking out in front of you, all you can see are wrecked spaceships oh, God. and debris floating <laughs> everywhere, and you appear to be in oh. orbit around um, a rather strange-looking planet with a single moon. And there are suddenly just proximity alerts start going off all around you. And... Um, Captain Yan yells to to Caster to man the ship's auto cannon, and she says, "Start clearing this debris, or else we're gonna we're just gonna lose all of our shields here." 
So the um, auto cannon starts opening up on the Pearl of Io and just starts um, blowing up and clearing as much of this debris that is drifting towards the ship as possible. And um, more salvage here than I was led to believe. <sighs> How many none ships this, is this? None of this shit is salvageable. Um, Alex says, I'm glad you've asked. We approximate that there are 112 complete or near complete or utterly wrecked ships in this area. Furthermore, there appear to be at least 64 ships on the planet surface and a further 30 ships on the surface of the moon. Are they wrecks too, the ones on the surfaces? Everything appears to be wrecks. We are still picking up a signal from the Alexis. However, we are not at the position of the Alexis transmission signal. Uh, I would like to go look over his shoulder at his control panel. You look at his you look at his control panel, yeah. And, and I'm I'm trained in computers piloting and astrogation. I'm gonna okay. try to determine for myself exactly where we are. For okay, so you're gonna use which of those skills do you want to use? Do you want to use astrogation? Astrogation would be the pertinent one. Okay, and Pollux says, um, an excellent idea. I shall assist you in your query, which means that you get an advantage on the roll. Okay, so? So you're both, you're both doing this, and what, what is your score in astrogation? So that would be a, ooh, what are we rolling? Um, that would be an intellect plus whatever your, plus 15. On your astrogation. So intellect plus 15. So that's what you need to roll under, yep. yes? Under. Or equal to, I guess. Okay, so that my intellect is a 33 plus 15 would be 48. 48. Yep. Okay. And, you, ha and yes. you have advantage. So you roll 4d8. Um, <laughs> that's exclamation point roll yeah. in this. Yeah. Sure. Bang bang roll. I've been I've been living in uh uh Oh so close. Roll twenty lately. Try again. You got it. No <laughs> Although nice. We're we're <laughs> Where, where now the fifty five no, rolled you, you rolled you rolled a you rolled a D one hundred. Um the game uses uh the game uses D tens, which you know theoretically will give you a different a different result to rolling a single D one hundred. So what's the, the same thing? No, no, let, let me, what's the correct syntax then? Are these stat rolls? Uh, percentile rolls? Yes, they are. Then rolling a D one hundred is no different yeah. than rolling a tens die yeah. or a single yeah. die. No uh, different. I don't know. If you want to go <laughs> statistics, I mean, I'm talking about statistically what the die yeah. returns. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. yeah. It's they're the, the same. same. Yeah. Okay. Well, too bad. Right. So, well, you are you're able to ascertain that the um, the distress signal position was 22 parsecs from Prospero's dream. <laughs> but uh, what the hell? What was that? That was a wild Becky, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, your actual location is approximately 108 parsecs from the origin of the signal. Now, that doesn't seem to line up with only being in cryosleep for eight days, does it? You're the robot. <laughs> <laughs> and Captain Yan turns to you and says, no, that does not, that does not line up with being in cryosleep for eight days. So what I'm hearing is that Castor and Pollux royally screwed the space pooch. Castor and Pollux, everything, everything 
appears to be correct in the navigation system. Ah. We have traveled 22 parsecs to the location of the transmission. I well, say, I say we Captain, off androids' heads and make sure nobody messed with them. Captain Yan says, "Tell them the best part, Pollux." And Pollux turns to you and says, "We are still receiving the distress signal from <laughs> the Alexis oh. in this." Well. I mean, and I we suppose... have a vision. You're cutting out. Yeah, you're... Oh, okay. well, I thought it was just me. Yeah, you're cutting out a little bit, Colin. Mm -hmm. You have visual contact with the ship. Um, right. Does it seem that the auto cannons are doing their job right now? Yeah, and... they're yeah they're okay. managing they're okay. managing to keep the debris clear of of okay. the ship, and the um, right. the proximity alarms have ceased going off. But okay. as you as you look at the uh, the window, <laughs> as, as, as for all I can call it, um, mm -hmm. portal. You the portal. Porthole. Um, you can indeed see a large vessel drifting slowly among the debris towards you. Is it a and nuclear you can, vessel? No, it is not a nuclear vessel. And um, it is drifting close enough that you can see the uh, name Murakami Wolf Corporation and Alexis painted across its side. All right. I've just got to, I got to say this. I don't know much about astrogation or space travel, but this looks like a fucking spaceship graveyard. This is like some kind of like trap or something. Should we just haul ass out of here? Well, I'll just I mean, put it on the table. I don't know. Captain Yan says, uh, tell him the good news, Caster. And the just other android, the, the other android turns to you and says, um, when we dropped out of hyperspace, we have realized that our jump drive is no longer functioning. <laughs> Well, yeah. hell. Well, okay. I have mechanical repair. Can I fix it? <laughs> right now, I would estimate, given our 108 parsecs travel, it will take us approximately two years to jump back to the nearest populated base. <laughs> That's why I say, can I fix jump drive? Yes, <laughs> please do. Because if we do not get jump drives back online with thrusters, it will take us approximately 140 years to reach civilization. I get wow. it. I get it. I get picture. <laughs> well, Bolt, maybe you and I should get to work. Yes, Crank. <laughs> Sorry, that name cracks me up. <laughs> it cranks you up. It cracks and cranks. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, crank and bolt. Crank uh, and bolt. We're going to fix it. Ship. So, so um, bolt and crank. Crank and bolt are going to head down to the cargo deck and take a look at the jump drive. Sounds good to me. Yep. Okay. Hey, hey Cap'n, why'd you just uh, wake us up, the rookies here, uh, instead of the rest of the regular crew? Just out of curiosity, like. I wanted to make sure what the situation was like beforehand. Castor and Pollux have instructions. We'll be waking them up shortly. All right. Because this is going to take all hands. Hopefully we can just get the jump drives back online and get the hell out of here. Although she's right there in front of us and she's still sending out a signal. Yeah. Now her the Try signal was on comms. 
Oh, yeah, that's a thought. You try talking to them? Caster says that he has received no response to his comm signal. Mm-hmm. Scans do show. Use my long range <laughs> comm. You want to do your long range comms? I don't trust these other droids. <laughs> okay, we don't need a roll for that, do we? No, I don't think we do. I don't think so. You get no response. Just, just dead air. Uh, say, well, shit, Captain, I'll go check it out. Yeah, I guess that's what I signed on for. And I'm not going to help anybody fix a uh, jump drive, though. I don't know. Uh, if we need parts from the other ship that might help us, assuming that they're dead in the water, I don't know. Can well, see what that thing got. is that thing is that thing is drifting, and um, uh, Captain Yan says, uh, it's going to be tricky to to steer this thing into some kind of a synchronous orbit with it so we can keep up with it. Um, Caster is a fairly decent pilot. Do you guys, are any of you trained as pilots? I have yeah. piloting I know, skills. I thought, uh, with my hand. I thought you were down. I'm a pilot and an astrogationist. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, you want to I attempt? You want to? You, you, and uh, um, um, Crank Thanks. have have headed down to the jump drive, so you're no longer on the bridge. That's so, okay. Um, yep. Um, okay, so ID ten T and uh, assisted by uh, Caster. I'm having a real hard time keeping track of all these androids here. Um, are going to attempt to uh, bring the Paralavio alongside the Alexis into some form of a tight orbit, so you can stay together. You're still going to you're still going to need a way to um, tether to the ship. Um, well, can we match orbit? Is there a shuttle or something we could take over once we're matched? Uh, unfortunately, there's no shuttle on board really? the Paralavio. So um, you're going to have to walk it. All right. Yeah, I'll tell but, you. Um, but um, you, can, you can see, you can see um, the um, external access airlock <laughs> to the... Alexis on its port side. Because right now it's drifting towards your starboard side. So um so okay. Let's uh let's do a bit of piloting with thrusters here then. ID ten T. And that is going to be uh your intellect again. Plus plus uh what have you got for piloting? Is that a 15 or is that a 10? Well, that's, that's a 10, and then my astrogation is a 15. But yeah, piloting is a 10. So we're shooting for a 40. I'm going to let you bring I'm going to let you bring in your astrogation as well. Okay, so that's another 48 like last time. So and that would be 30 yeah, 48 plus another 10. So that'd be 58. No, it'd be no. plus another 10 for <laughs> piloting as well. Yeah, I'm going to let you do both. Okay. Okay, fifty-eight. Uh, and is this an advantage because Caster's helping me again? Yes. Or? Yes. Ooh. I'm good. Oh, you're very good. <laughs> <clears throat> you don't need another I do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> you weren't lying. Yep, I'm a pilot. Uh, so you and um, you and Caster nice. um, look look at each other and nod um, approvingly. And the uh, the ship is uh, now just uh, above the Alexis. Do I have to sit here and maintain piloting, or now that we're in position, no, can we lock no, on? No, Caster, Caster can Caster can maintain can can maintain the. Uh... Okay. He can maintain the orbit. 
I'll start putting on my vac suit. Okay. Is anyone uh, anyone going outside with him? Uh, I'd go over. Do we want to wait uh, and see how? Uh, oh yeah, Walter sure. Is. We'll see how. Meanwhile, in the jump drive. Yeah. Probably have a lot of while, us, but... or maybe they'll have parts orders yeah. we can look for on the other ship, assuming it's dead in the water. Eh, this will take just ten or fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Had a lot of experience with jump drives. So, um, Crank and um, Bolt are both down in the uh, jump drive section of the of the engine rooms. And um, do, do, do. <coughs> so, uh, what do you want to what do you want to do down here, you guys? Well, diagnose what the problem is and fix it. Okay. Good. I like you, Crank. To the point. This is not complicated. <laughs> okay. So, um, let me see. Let's get a uh, intellect roll from you. And um, what, what are we using? What are we using here? Uh, engineering, heavy machinery. I have both heavy machinery and mechanical repair. Uh, as do I. Um, okay, let's go and with... I also, um, have, I also have engineering. Okay. Um, then who's got the who's got the higher intellect? Uh, I got 42. What have you got? That would Maybe. be you then, Bolt. Okay. Okay, so go 42 plus uh, go 15. So 57. Am I able to help? Yes. So okay. you do what, have advantage. What, what, what am I doing? Am I doing a, a roll 1d10? Uh, sorry, 1d100? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. 78. Oh, dear. Go again. The advantage. Oh, the advantage means you go twice, right? Cool. Yep. I keep forgetting that. Uh, so do it again? Yep. Yeah, only better. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks for the encouragement there. No problem. Oh, okay. no, he said oh that's worse. <laughs> oh. Uh, it's going to be one of those nights. I guess you better give it a... In it, Russia, it, better is worse. Give it, uh, <laughs> give, it, give it a try, Crank. I cannot. Uh, is it, is Russia, bad. drive too jumps too. Too much vodka. Too much vodka. Okay, I'll like. tell you what you what you can determine is that the um, there appears to be nothing wrong with the jump drive. Um, you check what? its fuel cells, and its fuel cells are currently at sixty two percent, which is um, consistent with a ship that has traveled for approximately eight to nine days. Hmm. Now, is it possible to just give it a good swift kick and see if it kicks back in? Yeah, a little a little of the uh, Millennium Falcon treatment? Yeah. No, you're, you're not able to... Um, <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't have any effect. You try turning it off and turning it on again. Yes! Can we do so that? You, that is exactly what we do. We turn yeah. it off and turn it on. Sure. Again. Okay. Um, you want to give me? Uh, you want to give me another uh, engineering or mechanical <laughs> repair roll? Right again, bolt. Uh, all right. I try again. I still say kicking it was best idea. Well, we can also say you're kicking it too. <laughs> there, there you go. go. That is better. Um, it has no effect. Um, all readings, all readings from the fuel cells and from the drive itself are normal, but the drive is just not functioning. There's just no power coming from it. Hmm. Well, we've tried nothing, and I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> well, I got a hang on. I got a. I got a pretty. I've got an expert skill in jury rigging. You do <laughs> tell. You can. You you can ascertain that the um. The uh, the power to the drive actually appears to be slowly draining, like almost to a an imperceptible level. But you definitely see uh you definitely see a energy drain on it. Source of drain. Source of drain. Yeah, good. Um. Well, we'll just say from your from your engineering role that um you're able you. Can't quite 
can't really pinpoint the source, but um, it appears to be coming from the general direction of somewhere outside of the ship. Oh boy, are we putting on the space suits? Perhaps. So, so general direction, like close, far, everywhere, close. all directions? Close, nearby. So, and, and, and in a specific direction? Um, no, you can't tell which direction. You can just tell that it's it's somewhere close by. Mm. Okay. Uh, would this be something that we could probably ascertain if we went outside? Um, in the vacuum. Do you do you have any um do you have any devices that you can use? Um, I has a vac suit. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean actual um. I mean actual um like computer devices of any kind. Not like a crowbar. Really. <laughs> uh, like um. Like a hand Tom, Tommy Walsh has a med scanner. I've got a I have bio, a, bio I have a bio scanner. Yeah. So you have bio scanners. Um, I think bio standard excavation. Pack. Yeah, I think we both did. Yep. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that um, both of you, or at least one of you, has um, um, some kind of a general um, um, circuit reading, energy reading device. Oh, sure. they have that you kind can, of stuff on the ship. You, you can call whatever you want. They would have it on the ship too, wouldn't they? My quarter. So, but, um, I I also think you should have some kind of um portable thing. Given given your um given your career choices, I imagine you would have such a thing mm -hmm. that would um scan for like electrical signals and impulses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um. It it seems to be coming very much in the immediate vicinity of the ship. So basically, the sh the uh, the ship that you're in orbit with. Ah uh, yes. We report these findings to Captain Ahab. Although the signal the signals the reading is very erratic. It mm. seems it seems to be like a a generalized drain. But lo somewhat localized in the ship next to you, in the Alex. Okay, so we'd have to, we'd have in order to ascertain the the source of the drain, we probably have to check out the other ship. Right. Um. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you could attempt scanning it, but sure, that's fine. Yeah, Again. I, I don't think we're going to get any results from scanning it. We didn't. Yeah. Know, Turning it on and off and kicking it didn't do anything. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So we'll, yeah, so, we'll report these findings to the captain. Okay. And um, so you're all you're all gonna walk over. Is every is everyone going over? I'm what gonna head over. That's what I'm here for, man. Well, we got back. Yeah. Okay. All right. And um, you all have vac suits. Yep. yep. Before I seal it, I take a I take a swig from my uh, whiskey bo whiskey bottle. <laughs> all of you, all of you, anyone who doesn't have a vac suit, there are vac suits, and um, there are oxygen tanks, so you're free to equip yourself with one of them if you do not have one. Um, there is also there are all there's also a rigging gun here. I've already got one. You've already got a rigging gun. I do. Okay. Um so uh if you are if you are all ready to go, you can all head you all head towards the uh, airlock of the mm -hmm. cargo hold. And um the door closes behind you. And the cargo hold or the uh, airlock begins depressurizing. And then the next voice you hear is uh, Captain Yan. And she says, how are you folks doing down there? You all set to go? Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. I give a big old thumbs up. Five by okay. five. Okay. Well, be safe, folks, and enjoy your walk. And um, she 
<laughs> just see the airlock in front of you just hiss and the steam locks break off it and it slowly slides open and you find yourselves directly across from the uh, Alexis. Distance is approximately 75 feet. That's not so bad. So should we, uh, should we, should we hook up and make the walk? Yep. Okay, so is ID ten T just is he? Gonna, are you going to fire a line out with your rigging gun? Yeah, I'll fire a line with my rigging gun, and then I'll uh, uh, go over last. Okay. So uh, uh, <clears throat> that we have like mag boots or something. Yes, you do. You should all have mag boots. The, the rigging gun clips into my vac suit somehow. I would assume. Um, or you could, uh, you could tie off the line on, um, there is, you see a visible, you see a visible, um, hook that you can tether to by okay. the airlock, by the airlock on the pair of IO2. So you could okay. secure it there. And, uh, then you're all just going to, uh, ease your way out. And I would say probably Crank and I should go first, uh, so we can pry the, the door open with the crowbars if need be. Okay, before you run. Okay. Um, okay. And I see we have laser cutters and such, so we're in good shape. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Um, so you all um step out into the uh the cold expanse of space <laughs> and uh uh just make your make your way you just shimmy along this uh this line this rope line from ship to ship and um you make it to a hull of the alexis and in front of you is a just a large red metal airlock <clears throat> door um i'm just going to go knock on it Okay. My no eyes. else is gonna do anything. <laughs> open it. Okay, you gonna open it? Um, yeah. Who's gonna? Who's gonna? Who's gonna Me. turn it? Me. Okay, so let's give you. Let's get a strength. Let's get a strength roll on there. Strength or anything else, or just strength? Um, is there anything else you think you could use for that? <clears throat> I mean, maybe maybe heavy machinery. I'm not sure. No, nah, not really. I guess. Okay. No, just go with a go with a strength roll. I made it by strength of forty nine. Right. Oh, sorry, I'm uh my keyboard locked for a second. Hold on. Although I guess it doesn't matter if he got it open. I made it. Okay. The um the uh, well, that airlock double. It's a thirty three. It's a critical success. That is a critical success, isn't it? You open the fuck out of that door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the um, you uh, the uh, wheel securing the airlock gives quite easily, and um, there is a huge blast of of air from behind the door, but um. Fortunately, um, what's your name? Bolt. What? Not your name. I know you're Bolt. Crank. 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 Crank hard blast. Oh, crank. <laughs> it just it just rolls off the tongue. I don't know why I keep forgetting it. Uh, <laughs> um, you'd you'd been expecting this. You expected oh, yeah. that there might be an explosive um, rush of air. I've done side. this a lot. So you you managed to you you had ushered everyone out of harm's way, and um, the, there there is a there is an ex explosive rush of air from from behind the airlock, but it it doesn't it doesn't open up 
too too far and it doesn't um it's not a catastrophic explosion of air uh, um and the airlock the the airlock slides open all right i wave everybody you inside have, you now have access to the interior airlock Actually, no, that's not the way Craig works. Craig goes right in first. Oh, I was going to say, I should go first because I'm all armed and shit. Yeah, whatever. Craig goes in. All right, I'll follow. Yeah, I'll follow. Okay. Damn straight. Um, so you're all in the airlock. I assume you uh, close the door behind you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And um, you're now in the interior airlock of the... Alexis, there's a there's a small window. There's, a, there's another door that uh, enters into the main ship. Um, in front of Alexis, you, Alexis, play come sail away with a small window. <laughs> I will. Uh, um, uh, I'll do a comm check with the captain. Let her know we're inside the airlock. Okay. And then um, the beside the um, beside the door, there is a um, there is a uh, button for uh, repressuring. Yeah, we should do that. Oh, yeah, let's repressure. <laughs> okay. So uh, okay, so you repressure the airlock. Um, there is a the, it starts to um, the pressure starts to uh, build up in the airlock. And so there is a, a yeah, there's a door in front of you leading into a, um, a, what looks like a hallway. Um, you can see that through the, the small painted glass. The, the door. Does it seem like all systems are normal? Artificial gravity is working. There aren't alarm sirens going off. Artificial everywhere. gravity is working. There is um, the ship is eerily silent. Um, it appears to be running on low power. The um, as you noticed when you were coming over, none of the exterior running lights were were running, and inside it appears to be running on low power. So, um, it's quite a a dim red light that you can see through there, and then there are um, like um, there are there are like a brighter white floor strip lights. Did someone say they had? Biological sensors. I got a bio yeah. scanner. Bio scanner. Okay. <clears throat> I'll give uh, Crank a break since he did. He opened the hell out of that door, and I'll use the bio scanner because I'm sure he's got one too. So you're uh, you're scanning for life forms. You're scanning for life forms. Yep. Uh, you want to give me a roll? Against. Um, what you got? I don't know. Uh, what do you mean, what have I got? What have you got in your skills? Oh. Here, I'll look. Let's see. CRG, heavy machinery, uh, mechanical repair, scavenging, planning, engineering. So that just be intellect if there's no... Yeah, just, give me, just, give me a, just give me a straight intellect roll. Oh, biology. Is helpful. Yeah, I don't know much better. about biology. That yeah, probably that's, doesn't that's, get it, huh? Uh, that does not work. I'm just not doing well with the intellect. Wait, I've got and my own bio scanner, too. so I can give it a shot, yeah? yeah go ahead, okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I got it. All right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> not doing well tonight. <laughs> um, you, 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 you get, um, uh, when you turn on the bio, you get, um, a quick, Faint blip, hmm. but then it, it it you're unsure if it um you're unsure if it's uh just a technical glitch from it starting up or if it actually found something. And as you continue to scan, um you you find nothing there. You also you did you do detect a, a faint faint life signs. That seem to be somewhere above you, but other than that, um, you're not reading anything. 
Yeah, I'm going to turn my body cam on uh, just to record whatever we see. Can I? Could I actually transmit it back to the ship so they can see what we're seeing? Yes, you can. I'm going to do that thing I said. Do we all have body cams? Maybe if we're if we're uh, if we all have body cams, we should probably all do that if we're going to split up. Mm, it's in my kit and it's in the excavation kit. It looks like. Yeah, I've got the I've got it in my excavation kit. Yeah. Uh, turn them on. Do no harm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Body cams on. Click, click. Um, I suppose I, I would should... like to. I'd like to check with the uh, with the uh, portable circuit reader once we get a chance. Um. Okay. Uh, you want to check with your portable circuit reader? Go for it. Sure. And that was that's going to be. Uh, well, engineering. I mean, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, go go with engineering. Let's go. Right. With, let's go with engineering. Forty-five. Count. How how do I count engineering? What do you mean? How do you count engineering? It's, well, I don't uh, know. You told me oh, to roll so it's, it. it's your it's skill. An, it's your intellect plus fifteen. Plus fifteen, yeah. Oh, okay. Intellect plus fifteen. Okay, so that would be um, uh, fifty-seven. Nice. Hopefully, you're well within it. Um, um, your uh, your scan is you're able to um, you're able to um, plug into the uh, Alexis's systems, and you are able to get an overall map of the ship. Oh, nice. Um let me tell you you are right now on the lower part where it says A1 mm -hmm. you are basically on the other side of that red airlock door. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to find the source of the power drain is what's going on here. Um that's also what you're checking for here. Mm -hmm. Um you are getting a vague reading um, somewhere uh, east of you. Okay, so maybe down the hallway uh, towards A5. In the cargo area. Yeah. Okay, well, that might be, uh, that might be a good place to check out for me. What's everybody else doing? Well, our, do we want to stay together? Yes. Or put up and look for clues. <laughs> all right, I'm all for staying together. I mean, it'd be interesting to check out the bridge, but yeah, if you got a read on that power drain, that seems maybe like our primo problem. Um, well, if I mean, if we can get that resolved, then you know we're agreed, we yeah. see what else is going on. Okay. So I'm going to just have my uh, SMG at the ready. These guys have the useful skills for figuring stuff out. So I'll just try to be on guard for anything weird leaping out at us or anything like that. I'm a little on edge here because none of this. Well, seems... you take poison. I'll bring up the rear with my Vibe Shetty. Nice. <laughs> Love it. I want to see what a Vibe Shetty looks like. Do we have a picture of a Vibe Shetty? Uh, I'm quite curious. I want to see. I want to see what was. What yeah, was I don't know if it was in the book. Uh, I, don't know I think if it's it was essentially in the book. just a physical version of a of a, a lightsaber. Oh, all right. Okay. Like it's, instead of it's made of energy, it's like actually a blade that's vibrating so fast it just. Zoop. Okay. Fair enough. No, there's not one. There's not one in the book, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Um, so are we gonna march on over to the cargo area and so you're venture you're venturing out of the airlock? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. they're gonna learn yep. much of sitting in it. Yep, yep. Are we getting like an automatic uh atmosphere reading on our heads up display in our suits or anything like that? Um, yes, you are able to tell the um uh life support systems appear to be maybe 80, 80 to 85 percent functional the atmosphere is breathable um the uh gravity is in place temperature is within temperature, temperature range. yes it's a little low okay. but it's it's at least survivable okay 
All right. Uh, so A1 is this entry area here. Um, yeah. So, um, so you, you, you enter, you enter that area and you find yourselves in a, um, in a, uh, small corridor in front of you. There is a, um, a ladder that, um, leads upwards to mm -hmm. the upper decks. You are currently in the lowest deck of the ship. There are two decks above you. There's a habitation deck and a command deck, just as just like on the Pearl of Io. All right. Well, let's try to find your energy source. So I guess I'll lead the way east and quote unquote uh, around the corner. And then turning left toward A5, that's our plan, or do we want to try to go through the cargo hold? Um, I'm I'm suspecting the cargo hold. Uh, what do you think, Crank? Let's just go right in. Okay. Are you just going, you're just going straight into the cargo hold? Um, How do you always sound so surprised when we make yeah. a decision? Okay, yeah. there's another... <laughs> Moron going I'm right just, into the cargo hold? I'm Idiot. just I'm just asking. Okay, <laughs> so there is, there is, a, there, right. is, there is another airlocked door. Mm -hmm. Which is which is sealed and shut. Why do I open these things? Oh. Is there? Hold on. Is there a screen reading of like what's beyond? Like if it's pressurized, uh, is there like a display we can look at and see if the other side of this is pressurized and whatnot? So we're not. There is. There is not. Okay. So we just need crank well, to use his heave skills and pull it open. It's just, <laughs> just I, keep I your back suits on. That that it's a the, it's an it's an interior airlock. It's not an exterior airlock. There right. are only yeah, there are only two exterior airlocks on the ship. The one you came in, and then there was a larger one on the starboard side of the well, ship. My my only concern is if like the hard cargo hold doors are blown and there's vacuum <laughs> on the other side of this, we're going to get sucked in pretty quick. Uh, it won't let us open the door if if it's not pressurized. That's okay. true. I, right. I would assume a ship is that smart. Yep. All right. That's true. I'm still gonna kind of. So, well, you could always. I mean, you could always door. go to the bridge and open them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So who's gonna who's gonna attempt the door? I mean, yeah, I'm on okay. it. Go for it. Remove the map. Oof! No. Oof. <laughs> Shall I give it a try? Sure. You know who. You know, used to be good at spaceships. The Russians. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong. Do not say How that. Dare How dare you? <laughs> I show you. Oh, my goading yes. works. Right. <laughs> yes, that was that was clever. <laughs> Bolt spins it like it's a top, and it just yeah. the door just the door just slides right open. Bolt fist bumps with Frank. Okay. All right. Um, and, I um, will. I'll make my way in, machine gun pointed and at the or like I guess up a bit. I don't want to shoot a civilian here, but I'll make my way in at the ready. Okay. So hold, and it's a uh, very large, well provisioned for archaeological digs. There's um, skeleton walkers. Um, some of them are equipped with laser cutters. And then, um, yeah, those big exoskeleton mechanical no walkers. You awesome. There's uh, some earth movers and a crane, and then uh, lots of conventional tools like picks, shovels, and then a variety of gear for various terrains. There's parkas, vac suits, mag boots, etc., and uh, rations. Um, Immediately jump into the truck and go beep beep, just like Donald Trump. Distinct, a distinct lack of weapons because it's a research vessel. Mm -hmm. I would and, grab the rations. And also, you're taking some rations. Okay, you can add them to your. You can add them to your inventory. <laughs> I mean, you know. I yeah, mean, go ahead. Um, in the okay, in the center of the hold, there's a uh, uh, a rather strange artifact that appears to be made of a, a dark, twisted metal. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What are our and, portable circuit readers telling us? Uh, I'll finish them. Um, your your readers are telling you that it's um, 
made of a steel alloy, mostly iron, carbon, tungsten, and cobalt. Mm -hmm. Um, it's highly polished and just very, it's just very, very black. It's almost just like a black mirror, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, and it's this grotesque statue made up of just excessively jointed, twisted limbs that are all entwined with screaming faces. Oh, wow. Um, Jeez. That look almost human, except they've got like there's there's far too many eyes and mouths, and it's just really quite grotesque. And it's do you picture this? Three feet wide, five feet high, and about it seems to be about two feet thick. But there are broken cargo crate just strewn everywhere around this this um, thing. Um, and they're just scattered all over the floor. Um, and surrounding the statue, there are the corpses of six crew members mm. that are all kneeling around it, and they're either touching it with their hands or their forehead. Just the source of the energy drain. Yeah, that's, that's our problem. Let's we'll shoot it into the sun. Um, oh, I will also tell you that um, in the, the northern wall of the cargo hold is a uh, very large exterior airlock. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, th this looks like we ejected out the airlock and shoot it with the autocannon. Do you want to, um, did you want to scan this, um, yes. Crank? Go ahead and scan it. Is this an intellect roll that we decided? Yes. Okay. I have trouble reading these instruments sometimes. You don't have computers, so it's intellect, and I guess it's... Oh, actually, I got a clear reading. Oh, very you clear. did? You get a very clear reading. Except you don't get a clear reading. You get um, just a bizarre mix of energy readings from it uh, that that make no sense whatsoever. I don't like things that make no sense whatsoever. Eject it out the airlock and shoot it with the autocannon. And again, or I've got a laser cutter right, right here. I, I, I vote I vote we put the autopilot on this ship straight into the damn sun. Set the controls for the heart of the sun. <gasps> and Captain Captain Yan comes along and uh says Do you think that thing's of any value? Not to me. Uh, they've got some. They've got some nice salvage equipment too. But yeah, I'm inclined. I'm inclined to agree with you that there's there's something just massively rot about this ship. I mean, I wouldn't but, mind one of these exoskeletons. We can keep that. We're stuff. here, but the statue's got to go. It is Russian. We're here, mission folks. So. I'm with you, though. I say check the ship for survivors, see if there's anything we can salvage, and then just anything you can carry back, bring it back, and then either we self-destruct that thing or we eject that thing. I mean, if we eject board. that thing and, and shoot it, is there any reason I can't just try to, we can't try to take the whole damn ship back with us? Wouldn't that be a steal if we brought the Alexis back? Sounds like a plan. We could try no. that. I like it. If we, I mean, or we have two ships that don't have uh, hyper jump capability. Well, that's a that's a bridge to cross. Mm. Speaking of, should we check out? So, oh, and uh, does uh, is our mission include bringing uh, remains back or only survivors? Only survivors. All right, that makes job our job easier. Sorry, fellas. I say like the corpses. To, I like to determine the causes of death for the, the corpses. I'm going to use my uh, uh, med scanner to analyze it for disease or abnormality. How uh, close do you want to get to that body. thing, Doc? I mean, I'm going to get close to the dead bodies because they're dead bodies. But they're all Not touching connect. the thing, so I, that's all I'm yeah. saying. Be careful. I'm just going to wave my med scanner at, at dead bodies. What do, okay. what do I see? 
Okay, give me a roll. Pathology. Would that would that be pertinent as a skill? Did you say what? Pathology. Yes. Yeah, that's absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah, a fifteen that's for sure. On. Exactly the skill you need. <laughs> nice. Holy crap. How you guys keep really single digit numbers? That's impressive. Pretty good. Uh, it, it is. Um, I got a three. Uh, and I was shooting for a 59. So I know what dead body <laughs> Um, You can ascertain that um, the all of these individuals, their bodies were drained of all fluids. Whoa. Uh, including um, uh, bone marrow. Yeah, completely, just completely drained. They're just, they're, they're literally empty, empty leathery shells. Are there any kind of like puncture wounds or anything like that? No. Not that you can ascertain. Huh. What what could possibly cause something like that to happen? <laughs> I don't uh, think he's asking me. <laughs> uh, space vampire doc. I don't know, man. Uh, I I don't know. I think maybe we should start trying to find survivors, set, salvage what we can, and get the hell away from this thing, or flip around and get this thing the hell away from us. You um you hear a a skittering. Oh fuck! In the vents above you. Oh, just boy. just just for a second, just a. Oh god, it's alien. Could be a survivor. Yeah, I wonder Let's if someone get in these exosuits now. I pick I pick a laser exosuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, are you are you serious? ID ten T is that what he's going to do? I mean, as much as that would be awesome, no, he's not motivated <laughs> to do that quite yet. Okay. Um, Whatever. You don't, it's want, just a... you don't want to interact with this um, artifact I mean, in any way. You don't want to try and um, other than prod, shoving it out the airlock, poke it, call it, cut it, or do anything. No. With it. No, <laughs> I think I would like to limit my interaction with the mysterious artifact of doom. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing: you like litter dead bodies around it. Why do you think we want to touch it? <laughs> I didn't litter dead bodies around it. <laughs> Bolt is crazy, but he is not stupid. <laughs> I'm just the guy with the story. I'm not. I'm not doing the bodies. So okay, putting this puppy back up for you guys. Um, All right. So you said there were various tools and pieces of gear in this room. Um. Yeah, they were mostly uh, just like picks and shovels. Um. They're also. You said they were like vac suits and stuff like that too, yeah, right? Yeah, they're vac suits and mag boots, but you've already got those. Do I, There's... Do, I do I see a pair, a spare pair of infrared goggles sitting around? Um. There are not a pair of infrared goggles sitting around. Okay. Um, okay. Who does have infrared ra- goggles? How many, ra- how many of the rations was I able to get? As many as your big hands could carry. Take your pick. Um, say, I don't know. What do you think is a fair number of rations? Ten. Ten? Okay, we'll say six. You got six. You got six rations. Hey, shoot for the moon and, you know, maybe you get a <laughs> Yeah, and those are those are you know each ration is like a, a day's worth of food. So, right. well, I'll start wearing my uh, infrared goggles. You have infrared goggles. I can has infrared goggles. I do. God I damn do. It. I, I do too. <laughs> I have them too. I'll put them on. Okay. Right. That's on their list. Yeah. I wasn't actually <laughs> expecting to find any. I just knew someone out there had some. <laughs> well, you know, you know what, you know what, Cam. 
you you can have a pair of infrared goggles. Yeah, there's a pair Thank of infrared. You. There's a pair of infrared goggles there too. I didn't know Thank that. You. I didn't know that other people were going to come equipped with them. I should have looked. But um, okay, okay. So you're all you're all, you're all wearing your infrared goggles. I'm not. I will actually That's... hand mine to the marine. So uh, he can have some. All right. Yeah. Let's so I'm gonna it. I'm gonna scan up along the roof then, where we heard the or the ceiling, where we heard the skittering sound in the vents or whatever's up there. Um, Any heat source? Human shaped, rat shaped, alien shaped? Um, you do see um you do see uh a, a, a faint a faint heat trail heading uh west of you. But it was like it, above you. It, it heads yeah, yeah. west. It heads west of you, and then it just uh. It just okay. disappears in the in right. the vents. All right, vents. there was something crawling around up there. Not enough of a lock to see what it was, though. Um, yeah, but ominously, there are on the map hidden vents. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, don't, I don't know quite quite why it Whoa. says hidden vents, but uh, seeing as that's the player map, but well, we've got uh, the schematic of the ship. Yeah, so yes, there the are, map. there are, they're not hidden vents. They're just vents. There's only there is only one hidden vent to the west of us, so. I'm going to go ahead and take a look in there. Okay. That's where the that's where the heat reading went, yes? Well, yes, through the ceiling. Did. I mean, it could be up on the floor of the habitat deck as well. We'll find uh, out soon enough. All right. Um, yeah, you do uh, see that heat signature uh, going through the vent. You do see a faint heat signature in the vent. You don't know if it's the same one you saw above. This one seems uh, cooler than the one above. Right, friends. We have friends up here. Are wow. you going? Are you going through the vent? Oh hell yeah! I've got my uh, laser cutter ready. <laughs> okay, so you uh, uh, you you cut away the vent easily enough. I'm not going to make you roll for that. It's just the vent. Um, so I leave it to a group discussion here. <laughs> uh, is this really what we want to do? I mean, we could uh, go check out the bridge, see if there's any sign of what happened there. I think what happened uh, is that there's something sneaking around here, and I don't like it. All right. And we got dead bodies in here. Crank, I think we are teamsters. We are not Marines. Let Marine handle it. Well, I don't yeah, know about get up that. There, then. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, can't we just go about our business and keep our heads on a swivel? Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. I mean, it so we got, getting, you said six get, corpses. Getting, have getting none getting of you seen a horror movie a, before? Have literally none of you seen a horror movie? Right, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Uh, so you we said six, yeah. six corpses here, Colm? Six. That leaves 24 more, counting crew, captain, first mate, and two androids. So, or Sorry, 18 more. 18, yeah. Six. yeah. Um, I think we should maybe look. There might still be survivors who didn't come and worship the weird metal. Yeah, getting, getting single file an event doesn't seem like a winning strategy. Yeah. Um, it is. It is not in Bolt's union contract to to find monster and kill. Yeah. So let's. Uh, yeah. I like to keep our head on a swivel. Idea. What do you think? We head for the bridge, or we should search out habitation. I could see a case either way. To find people. Well, we need to go through the the habitation deck to get to the bridge anyway, right? I don't know. Oh, I see. I see how I the ladders work. You, yes, you're yeah, absolutely right. Okay. Box. So, yeah, I, I say we make for make for the bridge and and see what we see on the way. Okay. Uh so if everybody's agreed, I'll head back toward A one, and it's just a ladder. Yep. All right. Uh <laughs> as you uh, so you just as you uh, as you as your hand clasps the uh, the rung of the ladder. Uh, you hear another uh, skittering somewhere above you. Fuck. All right. Well. Oh, is it, oh yeah. We just want to keep going about our business while this skittering keeps happening. Well, I raised yeah, my eyebrows. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, we could be in the Start in, shooting a, a tight vent with uh, skittering. Start shooting thing. what? All right. Where the skittering is, kill it. All right. You want me to go what? first, or you want me to cover somebody else going first? Excuse me. Um, no, you can go first. Yeah, okay. you go first, and then kill it. <laughs> it or them, or okay. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go uh, climb close to the top. So is there a closed hatch at the top of the ladder? How does this work? Or is this like an open um, ladder way? No, it's, it's an open ladder way. The, the, you can the, see the faint light above you from the invitation deck, which is the, the next level above you. Okay. And then the ladder continues up into darkness at this point. All right. I briefly ponder the idea of throwing one of my grenades up to clear the way, but then I decide, well, like, there could well, be a survivor. Have your, you do have your infrared goggles. That's I true. ID ten T. Okay. Um, um, am I getting anything? Say, nope. You're not getting okay. anything. Uh, so my plan is to make myself up toward the top of the ladder, and then I'm going to just kind of like try to burst up quickly, roll, and come up with my machine gun at the ready in case there's something waiting to surprise me. As you're opposed going, to slowly, cautiously putting my head up for it to bite off. So you're going all the way up to uh, C1 there on the so upper deck? To B1. I'm just to taking B1. one deck at a time. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay, you get out and you uh, roll my <laughs> out of the, uh, out of the uh, ladder chute. First and, and roll. Yeah. First and roll. And you find yourself in uh, another just empty corridor like the one you were in below okay nothing no life forms in here with me that i can see um nope you don't okay. see anything all right i think we're clear come on up wasn't right. somebody gonna make a second marine character at some point because <laughs> we yeah. can like help each other we give each other a boost no yeah, we got two teamsters like, instead yeah. <laughs> great I was trying desperately to roll up a scientist, and my lowest score Me too. Yeah. four times in a row was intelligence. <laughs> like I, and so just, I said, screw it. Apparently, I'm not going to make a scientist. At that point in time, we didn't think we were even going to have one. So. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. All right. So what do you think? Head up to the bridge, or do you want to, do you guys want to scout out uh, habitation and see if there's survivors in their, I guess, room? We're looking for survivors. you got to go... Come on, Marine. Gonna, you know this. Knock on every door. Yeah. Open every door. I'm going to shout, hey, anybody out there? <laughs> I roll my eyes. You can't fix stupid. <laughs> uh, That's ID-10-T. Both hands, is, both hands is vodka flask to crank. <laughs> I hand uh, the whiskey flask to you. Cheers. <laughs> you both have helmets on. I'm going to take a drink. At least I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, we activate the straw setting. And sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We want to go room to room here, or head up. Room to room. Are we looking uh, for survivors or what? Yeah. Okay. I mean, m maybe on the bridge we can get like an overall sensor. I don't know. Uh, video or something. But mm -hmm. okay. Well, we're right by the entrance to B two. There, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Um. Is that where you are? Yes, you are at the entrance to B2, okay. so that's where you're going in? Yeah, that's. we'll check out that as a first bedroom. Uh, um, this appears to be the uh, first mate's quarters, and um, lying on the floor here is, uh, is a decomposing body. Um, there's also a locker here, and uh, there's a vibrachetti on the wall. And there is also a SK-109 smart rifle nice. laying against the wall. I'll, I, I, um, if nobody else wants it, I'll take the vibrachetti. I'll yeah. pick up a rifle as, as, as long as I'm playing rear guard right now. Sure. Hey, Doc, here's another dead one. What do you think? Yep, I'm going to scan it. Is it okay. uh, does it look like it, it passed much the same way? Uh... He actually, you get um, the, you can tell that he has been shot oh. in the head. Oh. And it is, um, it's the first mate of the ship, Rayek. Rayek. Hmm. Um, yep, he died violently, but he, um, uh, he, he died by uh, uh, mundane means. You said the smart rifle was up on the wall, like he wasn't it was holding it. It was leaning. It was leaning against the wall by um the by the locker. Okay, so not not in a place where he could have shot himself with it. Clearly, no. 
Okay. Well, okay. That's another cause of death. That's interesting. Uh, locker, is it open? Um, sure. The locker's just got K rations and uh, a waterproof poncho in there and a flare gun. All flare right. gun, eh? I'll take that flare gun. Okay. Add it to your inventory. Uh, I could if I could get this cat off my keyboard. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Uh, I got a bad feeling we're going to keep seeing more of this. And I'm not clear from these schematics where doors are to all the bedrooms, but. Uh... Oh, just, to... just tell me where you're headed. Okay. Then. So uh, I guess check out, uh, take them in numerical order B3, B4. More corpses. B3. 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 B3 is B3 is uh, clearly the captain's quarters, um, but uh, it would appear that Captain Yan Chegg led a Spartan lifestyle alongside her crew. There's a small bunk in an alcove, and her possessions are basically some exercise equipment, a PC terminal, a wall com, and a small shelf of books. Um, no corpse. No, there's no body in here. I'll take the Michigan State banner. Um, <laughs> get it, Spartan lifestyle. Uh, 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 oh, okay. Um, all right, I get. Should, can we just make our way numerically in order? Uh, uh before, hey, I... yeah. The the computer terminal was it is it locked? Ooh, question. Um, it is uh, not locked. You can give it. You can give it a go. Sure. I just I turn on the unit. Is it? Is it? Uh, are there any files that are immediately up? Like uh, maybe some kind of a log or? Um, she appears to have been um, keeping a uh, journal, a log entry. Hmm. Ooh, and, oh. um, let's ignore that <laughs> so you're just going you're just going you're just going to go through that um you you browse oh, yeah. through the lo- you browse through the log and um it's a lot of it's just basically very mundane aspects of running a vessel of this size and then uh the final entry which is um from uh three weeks ago um speaks of uh artifact on earth on the moon in the Rondai sector, which must be which must be where you are, in the Rondai sector, and um, or is it the Randy sector? No, no, it's the Randy sector. Very funny. Oh, Randy. Okay, even better. And um, uh, and then it n- narrates a uh, a nightmare that she was having, and um. She, uh, her nightmare was that um, she dreamt that her fingers were jagged snarls of glass, mm. and that as she caressed herself, she could could feel how sticky her fingers are. So whatever, that's 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 that's, that's what her journal says. Mm. Huh. Yeah. Oh, she dipped her fingers in ketchup and honey. Gross. That was all a dream. Or yeah, was supposedly. It? Her fingers turned to glass, and they felt sticky. No, she couldn't feel how sticky they were. I don't know. Whatever. What? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. All right. And then uh, there's another one where she says that she dreamt that uh, no matter how much she struggled uh, to to bat them away that these crows were just relentlessly consuming her face. Oh. Wow. Hmm. So bad dreams. Yeah, man. All right. Well, uh, I'm starting to think we're not going to find a lot of survivors here, guys, but, uh, before yeah actually so is there any mention of the the stress the, the stress signal going out the loss of the jump drive 
no. Huh. There's no Based on the, uh, are the entries dated? You said it was three uh, weeks ago was the last one. Yeah, three weeks is the three weeks ago is the last entry. Uh, and that and that's relating to bringing back the artifact. All right, more of these rooms, or I'm getting more and more interested in seeing what we can find out on the bridge. Somebody must have sent that distress signal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna D four. One thing uh, I would like to do real quick is look through my SCART rifle uh uh spectroscope and use its thermal vision. Do I see anything different than the folks have been seeing with their IR? Um I'm wondering if my really expensive gun has better thermal vision. Are you just you're just pointing it through uh through the walls? I'm gonna look up along the, the ductwork like like we've been I'm assuming there's ductwork running through. Yeah, it does have spec it does have thermal vision. Um Yeah. You uh you 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 catch a momentary glimpse. Just 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 a fraction of a of a glimpse of um of something scuttling in one of the vents to the west of you. Okay, I'm going to say still moving west. Uh yeah, and it seemed to be um you got a you got a quick glimpse of what appeared to be like um maybe like tentacles. Oh fine. Why haven't you shot it? Because I didn't. Uh, okay, I step out into the hallway and try to infer the direction it went. As you step out into the hallway, um, you suddenly hear just an unearthly, just bestial scream. Where? And it echoes through from somewhere within the ship. It sounds like it's coming okay. from all around you. ID Tenti immediately loses all power and just collapses to the floor like a marionette that's had its strings. <clears throat> oh. So um, you are completely out of the scene, Cam. He's just ID ten T is just is just gone. He is just, his power is just completely gone. The rest of you just collapse to the floor because this thing, this scream, just sounds like it's coming from within your just within your skull, just Dude. like Ooh. inside your skull casing. Um, I need you all. I need you all to make a fear save. Which is probably kind of pointless because I can't imagine you're going to fail it. How does that work? Um, roll against your. Um, you just roll two d10s. It's not a percentage oh. roll. You roll two d10s and you want to roll over your stress level. Ooh, what's my stress level? Ooh, I brought mine. As I used my big leveling up. Bring my stress um, to zero. You don't need to roll. You don't need to roll, Cam, because your guys just. You guys just out to lunch here. My stress is one. What's what? What's the stress? What's your stress level? Like, I don't. Yours is going to be two. It starts at two, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I totally didn't do well on that one. I I think I might be confused on. So we roll two d ten, and what do we compare add, to? And add them. Yeah. Uh, and you you're comparing it to your current level of stress. It sounds yes. Like. Yep. Okay, so five against my results five. My stress is one. Yep, you're fine. Okay. Oh, so you want to roll over your stress? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, then I did do that. Okay. okay. Yep, I, you're all fine. I want you okay, all cool. to um. I want you all to add uh, four stress to your stress. Uh, okay. So. Um, this, this scream just seems like just unending. Um, uh, it, it just causes everything around you to like 
to invert. So you're just you see everything in just negative, just weird psychedelic colors. And you all just feel like your your heads are just going to your skulls are just going to shatter. The sound is so painful. And yet it also feels like it's, you know, not by you. It seems like it's quite a distance away from you, but yet it also feels like it's inside you. And it feels like if you were any closer to it, it would just the sound alone would just tear you asunder. And then as soon as quickly as it started and as suddenly as it started, the sound, the scream just immediate the screaming just immediately stops. And there's just complete silence in the room. And um, a few seconds later, um, ID10T, your eyes just open and you sit bolt upright on the floor and you have no recollection of what has just happened. Your last recollection is uh, looking through your spectroscope and then walking out the door into the hallway. You okay, Tent? Uh, am I okay? Do I add any stress? No. Cool. I say, yeah, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, you went down yeah. like a brick, man. Oh. There was a very scary scream. I think we should leave. I think we should leave. I think it'd like, be a good idea if we left. Flat out leave the ship? I like I like all Brent's characters. <laughs> whenever, we... whenever, whenever the, the really bad thing happens, Brent just does what any sensible person would do and just goes, let's just fucking leave right yeah, now. But, hey. I, I don't think we can leave without sending that statue into the sun. We're not going to be able to get out of here until we destroy that thing. Right, that might be what's draining the power from our ship. So, yeah, I, as much as I'd like to just leave, I think we can't leave without... I think you're right. Okay, uh, well... I think to be really safe, we should send the whole ship into the sun. Uh, all right. I, I mean... I, I'm going to report I back say, to the... I say we nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. I agree. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna relay back to the captain about uh, the tentacle thing that we saw. Yeah, good. Okay, um, uh, Captain Yan, um, uh, asks if you're finding any survivors. Not yet. All dead what, so far. He can't on. You, you can see what we're seeing. Do you think these things could be survivors? Uh, not with tentacles like that. Hey, wait, are there alien species in this world that we know about? Or is it all human uh, sentience and android? Oh, I think it's all human. Okay. Or no, it's, it's, it's all, like... yeah, or sentient <laughs> android so far. I don't okay. think there was anything on Prospero's dream. No, there wasn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, like if there was like another tentacle species of good guys, why? But yeah, I didn't want to rule that out. Okay, <laughs> but we would know that sort of thing. Uh, the tentacle friends, <laughs> the tenty pals, the Cthulhu ones. Nobody, nobody bought my pitch for that TV kids show. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we got to get that thing out of here. We should try to salvage it. And is it still worth a look at the bridge? Let's see if we can use. Let's see if the ship is navigable, and we can point it into the sun. That's right. All right. Uh, all right. What do you think, guys? To the bridge. Shall we take to the it bridge? To, take it to the bridge. Okay. Okay. So you um you uh, make your way <laughs> the ladder again to the um to uh, section C one, mm -hmm. and you find yourselves in a in a hallway. Um. I mean, I'm assuming this is the command deck, right? It is the command deck. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. To the west of you is the bridge, and to the um, the uh, uh, east of you are the life support systems and the navigation computer. Bridge, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. Listen, you're the Marine. Why aren't you leading more? Stop asking questions. Well, I'm, not like, I'm not like anybody's boss, man. That's not what I signed up for. Uh, okay. Okay. But anyway, yes, bridge. 
Okay, so you open the door to the bridge. How how are y'all going in? Uh walking. Carefully. Um I'll yeah, uh I'll go in, duck to the left and try to cover the like look left and then cover right if there's nothing to the left. Okay. Um you enter the uh command room on the bridge and it is in complete disarray. Uh, the setup is similar to that on the Perlevio, a captain's chair with two command centers on either side of it. However, these command centers are um, pretty much wrecked and appear to be uh, jury-rigged in order to be somewhat functional. There are two corpses lying near the view screen at the front again they um appear to be uh very dead and um in one corner is in one corner is a um half an android it's he's lost all of his uh lower torso he's, he has no leg everything from waist down is gone is milky white fluid flowing out <laughs> yes, it is indeed. And um, standing at one of the uh, consoles is uh, is another android, and he is uh, calmly holding a screwdriver towards um, um, God Almighty, towards arsenic. And he is calmly saying, calmly says to you, identify yourselves and please explain your purpose on this ship. Uh, well, we were answering a distress call from y'all. Uh, I don't know if dead. My name's Arsenic Sulfide and you are? I am Pander. Pander, uh huh. What happened here, Pander? And this is Cranot. The the bisected android. Yes, we are we are trying to recover the files to find out what is happening to the ship. Right. Were you on the ship when all this happened? Of course. Okay. So why don't you know what happened? We do not remember. Hmm. Okay, I think they might this have got this. Why, this is why we are trying to reconstruct the files from the navigation computer. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I think they might have gotten the scream treatment, you guys, like happened to uh, 1D10T. Uh, I, I'm good at computers. Perhaps you can assist. Let me try. Okay. <laughs> Okay, this isn't what I expected. Perhaps we shall roll. Perhaps we should roll these dice. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll one d one hundred, and that's just going to be a computer. So that's an intellect. So that's I'm shooting for a forty-three. I'm not an intellectual droid. Oh, that geez. does not work. Catastrophic failure. Oh, but but uh, that's catastrophic failure, but you're rolling with advantage. I'm still rolling with advantage, okay. 99. <laughs> still fail. Yeah, it's better than, yeah, it's better than a catastrophic yeah. failure. Um, the, 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 there's like one functioning screen here that um, Pander has managed to just wire together. The console's wrecked. The console's like covered in um just just dried blood and it looks like it was like smashed with a with a human body um but the um the data that's coming back on the screen is just indecipherable just garbage it's just it it's just nonsense it makes no sense whatsoever um is this is pander covered in blood by the way Pander is not covered in blood. That's a positive sign, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, 
Well, we probably don't need your help to do that. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm uh, I'm kind of mystified here. Pander says, perhaps you can, perhaps you can repair our navigation computer. Uh, I don't think I can. And bring our data systems back online. I like give it a try. Do you have to do that here or in the navigation room? That's in the. That's on the. It's on the same floor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, anybody have computers? Yes. Do and it. hacking. Okay, so you're gonna head back into the. Um, Crank is gonna head back into the navigation yeah. computer room. Uh, not alone though. Uh, are we gonna all go, or how are we gonna split up if we're splitting up? And you know. And I kind of nod toward the androids, as in, like we can't necessarily trust them. Hmm. All right, uh, you keep working here. We'll go back and check out the navigation computer. <laughs> okay, so who's heading back to the navigation computer? Me. Uh, I'll go okay. into cover you, yeah. And I don't know, maybe stick together? Um, sure. sure. Hmm. You can do that. Um, as you go in to the uh, navigation computer room, um, you, you notice on the floor there is um like oh very cool <laughs> there is a um like a burned what looks like a burned scorched outline just burned into the floor of of what looks like was a kind of a four foot long almost centipede like thing hmm but other so it's than just that, scorch marks, though? it is just scorch marks. It's almost like you know, you know, Hiroshima or whatever. You know, just uh -huh. just a just a charcoal shadow. outline. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Uh, while he works on the computer, I'm gonna infrared up and like scan the walls in here and shit. Okay, you don't you don't see anything. You can okay. see on either side of the chamber. There's uh life support units. Mm -hmm. Um. The one to the east of you appears to be damaged. The one to the west of you appears to be working just fine. Um, so, Crank, you going to have a look at the navigation computer? Yep. Okay, the navigation computer. Um, let's give a give an intellect and computers from you. Use hacking or just computers? Whichever one you want to use. Do you have Hack hacking? I do. Um... Let me see. Where is hacking? It's off of computers. It's like the advanced version or whatever. Oh, then just use your advanced. Use your advanced hacking. All use right. hacking. I like the sound of that. It gives me a better chance. What? Oh, ha. <laughs> Learn to type. Eleven, got it. Oh, excellent! Critical and not success. only did you get it, critical. Oh, critical. 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 You've been doing good with the criticals. Yeah. Uh, you are able to ascertain that the uh, navigation computer has been just entirely wiped. It's just, it's just fried. You never get. Really? Accidentally. You're not going to get anything from it. Um. It appears to have been deliberately destroyed. Mm, by tentacles? <laughs> by claws? By um, no. Um, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, um, um, there's no sign of uh, foul right, right. play or violence. Sure, violent. yeah, yeah. It just, it's just been wiped. There's no information on it whatsoever. It has, um, it has, uh, information from the last uh, three weeks on it, but nothing prior to that. And basically all it tells you right now is that it's been drifting here for three weeks. Hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have you to hear up. call hear it up. here. You hear a, a scuttling. 
Should we uh, leave it at the at the uh, scuttling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a cliffhanger. A cliffhanger. That's why that's why I threw in the scuttling. Oh, I figured, yeah. <laughs>